Alright, people. Man. Don't grow weary doing God's work, y'all. Don't do it. Heading in to do it again. I'm gonna make a con I will make a continuation of this particular video, but what this video was going to do is kind of talk about, well, the topic of it is school and education. I think most all of my stuff is going to be along the lines of education and entertainment because I like to edutain people. Edutainment is what it is. But anyway, um... I'm big on business, health, wealth, and doing better for yourself. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that educators deal with. Now, this particular school year has been one unlike any other for anybody, for everybody. Well, almost anybody and everybody, because some people still act like it's not a whole global pandemic. And those individuals who don't think it's the real deal, you blessed. You an idiot. But you blessed. Or take care of fools too. But um you blessed if it has not taken over your health and well being. And you're even more blessed if it has not taken the health and well-being of your loved one. And with this particular pandemic, people really just need to stay away. But in this capitalistic society that we reside, they got to get to the money. And if you don't understand that that is what it is, you got, you got it mixed up, messed up. But it's cool. If you don't want to get it, that's cool. You don't have to get it. All right, but... The whole pandemic been mishandled. Like, while these people have said, okay, we're going to do what we need to do to make sure kids can go back to school. No, they want to do what they have to do in order to keep that money train rolling. These places got to get funds and uh, they want these adults to be at work so they making decisions considering the money but not considering the people. They have to go out here and generate, create, and work for this money or spend this money. So that's why I make sure I focus on Educating children, educating people, period. But especially educating kids early on about business, doing business, and investing. Because you got to take control of your life, basically. You can't just let somebody else make decisions about your life. You may very well have something that you can do that is just off the charts great right but you'll never get it if you don't pour into it that might be your money tree you gotta water it so it will grow you have to make sure the soil is right you gotta tend to that soil you know you gotta be able to wash it and see when it's suffering you know, you got to be able to look at it and see when it is it's thriving and growing. But well, just with education, you know, uh, a lot of these people aren't prepared for virtual learning. A lot of these people ain't even prepared for learning with technology because 
Let's just start at the building. Most of these buildings are not up to date. Most of these buildings are too old to do what you need them to do. So the thing that I've run into is like, uh, we don't have enough outlets, power outlets. These children will work on a computer. We have to be able to have enough outlets accessible for them to do what they need to do. But they don't have those outlets. Number two, they don't even really have anything in place that can monitor, well they don't really monitor the browsing of the students because too often I have seen students playing games uh, looking at all sorts of videos searching all kind of just stuff that shouldn't even be accessible in an education setting so while you want to hand a child a computer you need to make sure you have some uh, lockdown browsers, some firewall systems in place, some block and or filtered websites because certain websites you should be able to get to, but the content should be filtered though it's not. But really and truly, just that lockdown window from when they are in school to where they to where they can focus on on the school. give you an example. Kids log on to the Zoom. They may go make their own Zoom. And what I mean by that is they will open another conferencing application, Google Hangouts, and have their own private, personal So these kids are hanging out when they should be at school. Now, if you had a technology administrator or somebody that actually was a coordinator, facilitator, or monitor or something, they just really just watched it. I mean, we have people that watch radars for weather. We have people that watch what you doing at work. Why not for the kids? If you want them to be successful, you need to make sure you put them in position to win. So that's one thing. The building is matching up with the technology. That's an, okay. And the technology ain't matching up with the people because for whatever reason, the people don't think about how important it is for them to get what they need without being distracted. But that, for whatever reason, was not high up on the list. All right. Another thing. This is a whole global pandemic. It is different. Things are different. You can't do things the same way. Or let me put it this way. You can't try to do it things the same way and then add something on top of that thinking it's going to just work. No, you have to adjust, adapt. So... Scheduling, the day to day scheduling should be different. So that way you will have only a limited amount of people in the building at a certain amount of time in order to get things done. And we still gonna stick with the building. How about we just go back to the building? I'm just gonna start up. We have people with options to come live or to come in person, but they don't have any restrictions whatsoever on the number of people within a building. Just like if a fire marshal 
has to shut down an event, a party, or whatever, because there are too many people present, and it's a fire hazard. And we know how often fires happen. They happen regularly enough, but they don't happen that often. And this whole global pandemic been going on every day, every hour, every minute, every second. But there is no limit on how many people can be in a the building. There are no limits as to how many people can be in a room. But you want people to social distance. You want people to maintain a three foot or six foot distance. But you don't have a limit on the amount of people in a room with limited square footage. So that's one thing. The buildings aren't made to do what you were asking to do. And another thing is this building might do something that the other building doesn't. Because that building has, I guess, more support, more staff in order to do it. So they are able to clean routinely. They have somebody that does that job. They have somebody that fulfills that role. Whereas in other buildings, you doing it. You're the janitor, custodian, maintenance, pest control, Sanitizer, sanitation, sanitizer, san sanitation worker, yeah, yeah. And you teaching, and you tutoring, and you, and they want you to raise somebody else's child. So the building. buildings are inadequate to do what you all are suggesting to do. And you're not concerned about that. But when the right person gets sick and the right person dies, y'all still might ignore it. Act like nothing even happened. But you know what? If that right person is you, I guess you just need a dose of reality. That's all I got to say. So, I'm just encouraging people to, you know, take control of their life. Take control of their life. And don't let anybody misuse and abuse you. Don't let anybody make choices that will jeopardize your health and well-being. So, I'm going to do another video, and I'm, uh, I think I focus on I might focus on the kids, then the teachers, then administration. But I think I'm going to continue to talk a little bit more about experiences working in education public education uh, underfunded public education